Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. If you're loving what you're hearing on the show, go out and tell two friends today. Show them how easy it is to subscribe to the show. The Real Estate Espresso Podcast is available on more than 20 different platforms. And however you listen to podcasts, you're sure to find the show. Spread the love around. Why keep all this goodness to yourself? Today's show is the story of a conversation that happened in our household and probably mirrors conversations that are happening all over the world and maybe in your household as well. The messages of social isolation have been clear for weeks. We're in the middle of an exponential growth in the number of cases of the disease, the number of critical cases, and sadly, the number of deaths. When you know the equation, it's very simple math to predict the future. We made the decision to keep isolated within our household and minimize trips outside the house. My wife has transitioned all her client appointments to video conference calls. I've canceled all my travel, and we've made minimal trips outside the house for critical supplies. After dinner on Sunday night, my son announced he was going for a walk. That seemed perfectly okay, but after about 45 minutes and he wasn't home, we saw that he had gone for a walk in his car. Hmm. A quick phone call discovered that he was out for a walk with a girl. He had all kinds of justifications. The girl had been in isolation for weeks, he'd been in isolation and they were walking outdoors in nature, and he was tired of being cooped up in the house, and he needed to get out. At this stage, we have examples of community transmission in our city. The public health lines are getting jammed with thousands of calls. The testing centers remain open until they run out of tests. It's clear that we don't know, and probably will never know, who does and doesn't get the disease. The public health officials are saying at this stage, not even to call. If you have symptoms, stay home. If you're really sick and having trouble breathing, then call your doctor to get an over-the-phone assessment. Most clinics have closed their doors and are only admitting patients after a phone screening. The result was a difficult conversation with my son. The isolation practice in our house cannot be a leaky bucket. We're either in isolation or we're not. And right now, for the foreseeable future, we're choosing isolation. My son shared that he takes the current situation seriously and that he's being ridiculed by many of his peers as a result. I'm seeing many examples on social media of people who are not taking this seriously. A friend of mine in Las Vegas posted a large group photo. One last group shot before we go into isolation was the caption. I was dismayed to see the photo. They're not bad people. They're just a little further behind in their adjustment to the current reality. As with any change, there will be a spectrum of adjustment reactions. There will be those who accept the new reality almost instantly. They represent the usual early adopter percentage of the population. Then you have those who will be easily convinced. And after that, you have the mass of the population who will follow when ordered by government to act a certain way. And finally, there are those who will be dragged, kicking and screaming every step of the way. We now know of people in the community who we believe have contracted the disease. The numbers are still small compared with the global situation. In every case, they didn't think they were taking a risk when they went out. Here's the problem. Most of those who are carriers are not exhibiting symptoms. They're completely asymptomatic and they're infectious, silently spreading the disease to everyone they come in contact with. I believe people are basically good and with good intentions. They also believe that the risks are low when less than 0.1% of the population have been diagnosed. But many of these same people will go out and buy lottery tickets where the chances of winning are less than one in a million. At this stage, we have to treat every person we encounter from outside our immediate household as if they're a potential carrier. Italy's been in total lockdown for nearly three weeks and they're still exhibiting accelerating case counts. The geometric progression of the disease in that country is showing very little signs of slowing down. Is this the result of people making too many so-called harmless exceptions? Is the disease spread even more easily than we previously thought? We're also seeing reports from Spain, Denmark, and other countries of extremely fit, healthy, and young people who are exhibiting some very severe symptoms. My son pledged to uphold the rules of our house, and I truly believe he meant no harm. But in spite of this, he did put our house at risk. As you think about that, have these conversations within your own household and have them compassionately. Have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.